Thank you, Tsunami. Yes, indeed. And Arc Warden in this best of one. Trent, I am so excited. I've been thinking about this hero, talking about this hero for months now. We haven't really played that much in this stage, if at all. Uh, he might have been picked in one of the days I was off, but this is exciting. And out of outside of the realm of the liquid that we've come to expect, a Mickey Arc Warden. Yeah, it's not uh, it's not really in their like super common wheelhouse, so it should be interesting to see how they they play around it. But uh, I really liked Lizard's point at the end about uh, like why why go this way with the draft, and uh, I think he's right in the sense of like pushing high ground just looks awful versus this team on Nigma. Uh, so in that sense, I think Nigma just put them in a really hard spot with this draft because not only is the high ground hard to push for the side of Liquid, but there's also just a lot of early pressure coming from Nigma. So things just look like they're going to be pretty uh, Nigma favored if I had to pick a team in this one. Yeah, I, I agree. I think this five man death ball they've got going on does look pretty scary. Obviously, uh, they can take objectives pretty darn fast. It's, it's a position three nature's profit here with mind control, so he should be pretty farmed. Expect him to be pretty active, trying to set up plays all over the place. Jihad Death Prophet, I'd say similar. Now, thoughts about this uh, Elder Titan? We have not seen the GH eat as much as a lot of the other fours. Do you like it here? Yeah, it was picked into the Oracle. Uh, so that, that can be a little bit annoying, but uh, I always think lane pressure Spell. when I see this yeah. hero. Yeah, uh, yeah, of course, because of the uh, the idea of just like saving people from the delayed stuns. It's, it's like versus Kunk or whatever, same idea, but uh, lane pressure is always good with this hero, right? If you can get yourself a good matchup. I'm assuming he does not want to be anywhere near uh, this Monkey King's lane, though. That does not seem like a very fun time. Monkey King, also an interesting choice. Always curious about the item build. Will it be the Aghanim's trap? Let's have this discussion again, buddy. What do you think? Call it now. Oh! Uh... Will it be the Agnes this game? First item. That's what I'm talking about. I think like, like Treads Ags or whatever. Yeah, Treads Ags. Is that the build? That's. He's just blended in as a tree here, by the way. This is uh, pretty incognito. Yes, yeah. Nothing he's, sus uh... going on here. Oh, now the banana. Yeah. <laughs> that one sticks out a little bit more. <laughs> the battle begins. You uh, the I kind of. I kind of think not. Not eggs first. I feel like there's just too much fighting. I mean, maybe he'll get away with it, but I don't know if he'll be able to. A good question. To me, to me it sure. seems like they want to defend these tier one towers and just every little bit feels like it'll help. But at the same time, I also agree that Monkey King kind of just has garbage item builds right now. Yeah. So I don't really have a much better option other than like drums into, and I don't want to go for like Diffusal or Echo or anything because it's just going to slow you down yeah. too. Like Shadow so, Blade, I guess, could be situational, but the, now that Silver Edge has an Echo component, it just doesn't feel that good. The pacing um, is just a little bit tough, right? Yeah, and from the off lane too. Might not be able to expect the optimal farm condition. All right, so we we talk about the the dispel for like the you know the saving dispel and obviously the dispel on the um, the astral spirit buff. Ever since that got changed, and so like, what does GH really get to do here? Not, not much. I don't know. This looks like a really tough matchup. I mean, he can kind of do these little trades. You can still play around the spirit this way. <laughs> they both. I Okay. I love how Insania is killing his courier while also losing his own, though. It's like that tunnel vision of, oh, guys, I got his courier as yours is running in the same course of danger. I, I don't know. I've, I've been there. There's something about just everybody having a courier. It, it being a low cooldown death. It doesn't feel like it's worth the bandwidth to process. I don't know. I, I got nothing, but. So level one Fortune's End is a 15 second cooldown. Spirit is 23 at its lowest is a 17 second cooldown. Uh, it has a lower mana cost, but the Oracle will happily just like fairy stuff out. So I don't really see a window where GH gets to ever actually use the spirit damage. I don't. Yeah, it's gone immediately there. Sania is on it. It's a, a comfort pick and a counter pick, so. Maybe GH can just uh, rely on stacking. I mean, isn't that one of the other benefits of the spirit that, uh, you know, Elder Titan's a good stacker? So. I mean, there's definitely right the mid game fights, he'll still get to do his stuff. That I'm not as concerned oh, about, you know? Yeah. Their five minutes uh, still great. It's just this first, what, 10, 15 minute window is not amazing. Um, also, mid lane, we should uh, talk about this here. The Prophet went mid to match up against this hard 
Yeah, they're just uh, just doing their thing. He can't really do anything versus the Treants. The Treants are very good versus Arc Warden, right? You think about all the different benefits they have versus the Arc Warden's annoying stuff, like the Flux and the Spark Wraith and everything, so it just kind of answers a lot of the problems. Yeah, and I'm sure Mind Control's okay with it. He gets a little more space, gets all that far mid. Winning the matchup right now. More importantly, I think it, uh, like, DP just needs six if she has someone else who's really strong. That's why the offline DP works in the first place, right? Like, mid DP, sure, she gets levels and gold and XP, and she's, like, level eight or nine forcing a tower, and she could be the forefront. But if she's just level six and MC TP's in, and he's, like, level eight or whatever and has a lot of items, then he can be that little bit of a buffer with himself in the trance to really uh, create a good opportunity on the early game pushes. But check this play from Nigma, buddy. Kuro Ooh. comes bottom, realizing that he could do a little more in this lane. Well, well, the stun onto Koikpa. Yeah, Koikpa tried to dodge the snake with the uh, the mischief, but he just missed it. Dyer's top tower. So is still not an easy lane, right? Insania down here has a lot of sustain. Soon to hit that level three breakpoint we're always talking about. I kind of wonder if they'll swap. But GH's TP is back up already, so it doesn't really work because he TP'd home to to heal and just ran top, so. And how's Boxy doing up here? Playing the Bloodseeker safe lane. I get tiny, both comfort picks. Yeah, they uh, they went for the Bloodseeker again, huh? Yeah. I mean, he's a guaranteed lane win. That's obviously one of his big strengths right now. Yeah, well, and it's also an adaptation because they've switched it up. It was the Boxy Invoker last game. Oh, sure. Point for one. So it is a little different. First. Oh, nice job, Tiger. Man, I did not think he was going to stay in that without the toss back. But he kept his static for the bonus damage and uh, gets the first blood on Tiny. Excellent hero to get first blood on. MC gets that four minute rune, uh, double damage. Pretty expected against the Nature's Prophet, like you said. Answers the Arc Warden's threats for the most part, so. The alien will get no Tyga, to start. He lurked. Now he's just running from the mid. Cool. MC, yeah, he's in deep here. Insania TPs, and now this three on one. It's going to be a bit much. They get a freebie there. Taiga taking credit. And Weeha can't punish Boxy because he's a Bloodseeker, and they can't really punish Klikfa either, so. Kind of independent cores on the side there. Girl will get the bounty uh, down the bottom lane, though, so it's gonna be three for one. I mean, the way Enigma, so a nice bonus for them. Yep, Miracle. It stains against Kulka. They get a lot of pressure from this Monkey King, but one of the better here uh, is Insania, though. Now up top, it's Insania. By up top, I mean in the lane here. Mind Control on his way back. Might still fall to the Coinster. There's that Boundless Strike. Still pretty beefy. Needs a little more. Not going to get it. Instead, there's a stun the other way. There's the Sprout. Still slows him down. Some body blocks with the Ents. And the Coinster's dead. Thought he had it when he got the uh, the dodge on the, the Snake again. I noticed that's twice now where he's dodged the Snake, but you still lose the Raindrop Charge. It's kind of funny. Yeah, weird how that works. I guess Raindrop's not calibrated around this random extra skill that is unique to Monkey King known as Mischief. Wow, how dare they? Radiant structures are <laughs> I can't believe how long it was allowed to be so broken. Yeah, Mischief is just a weird exception. Like, Willow, I feel like we've all given a pass at this point. She's got two ultimates. It just, it, it makes the hero, she needs it, whatever. Feels calibrated, right? Mischief just still seems odd. Like, okay, cool. Jumps down yeah. though onto Miracle just to drive him back on Insania coming through, but it looks like they don't think it's Out quite enough now. damage. Could be a little scary. Nice stun, but Koikba still finds the kill. Mind Control's here, gonna try to clean things up. There's a great Wrath of Nature that flew through before this fight. I think it might even still be flying. Only eight damage now. But this is the power of the Prophet, Trent, being able to make the turnaround plays just like this. Yeah, they really had to uh, drag that one out. It was a heavy commitment. Uh, once Insania went for that uh, Purifying Flames after the Fortune's End, they're kind of committed at that point, because if they, they don't finish it off, then the Medusa just end up being stronger than she was. Pretty even game so far, though, and all this commotion around the map, we haven't really been looking at top, but uh, honestly, it's, it's Boxy and we kind of at the top of the charts, both pretending that they're playing mid right now, just trading farm up top. Oh, uh, do you know how much that Wrath of Nature did to uh, Monkey, by the way? Uh, please hit me with the number. Uh, 486 damage. <laughs> just your standard level 6 ultimate, guys. 
level six, six minutes in. Mm. Uh, so what is that, like a final <laughs> hit or something on this thing? It it's must have been close. Damage. Oh, yeah, that's one of the last two, but, but that's brutal. That's I mean, just perfect MC. You're in mid lane. You cast this global spell starting at top lane. Then you TP bottom to right click them while they're getting crushed by the global chaos. It's... Ah. You see Tiger here? Look oh, how sneaky he's being. What's this devil up to? You get a ward down? Okay. He's getting the uh, the stacks here. No, he doesn't have a ward. Oh, yeah, they do. Look, plateau, baby. Oh, no, I mean, like, on him. I thought you meant, like, place another one, sorry. Like, to, okay. to block or whatever. But, yeah, no, they're just going to keep an eye on it. That's good. I mean, Miracle, Dusa, they, uh, of course, it's liquid. They know. He, he wants to come leech that XP, I think. Get over there, bud. They can't invade and try to do anything to take this, but Tiger will start getting closer to level five, it looks like. Okay, leeches a little bit. And they're pinging Already him. Split. Oh, Quite actually, that was... ways, though, across Enigma heroes. Yeah, that was boxy pinging. Oh, damn. GH found their ward. I thought maybe they were trying to sell it by blood raiding the camp after, but... Uh... Boxy will return to the lane and it's pushing in where we have just gonna catch to the tower. But MC actually threads a TP in behind with GH coming. Radiant Oscar. Boxy goes to the TP and not gonna make it. GH has the sleep. Hmm. Oh, tough TP against the Elder Titan. Got a pretty good window there. Yeah, I, stomp off. I'm not sure why. Why did he go for that when he Chrono Blade? I guess he just didn't think he could get away. Thought the body blocks would be too much, it's too slow. I guess he'd just get run down by the spirit anyway if he knew the ET was there. So he was just hoping to beat up the sleep. But this is the speed that we were very worried about. Liquid coming off a very rough match versus Secret. It cannot feel good jumping right back into another game that looks eerily similar because they also have a potentially very fast, quick draft that's going to take your towers. A little earlier than you'd like. They need to try to make something happen to buy time so this doesn't turn into like an Arc Warden Alchemist kind of game where you've got this one guy that's a vacuum cleaner on your limited part of the map. Up top now, Taiga. Get it on, but saved so far by Insania. Only level four. No false promise for the full reset, but DP, no ulti either. Some stick charges, what? mind control. On the hunt is now Monkey King comes in. It's a four on two. Reinforcements coming now from Kuro, but this is still going to be Liquid's fight, I think. They lose Insania first, but now Mind Control goes tree down, and he is also going to fall inside of the tree line. Profit. Another tick gets picked off. Those infused Die. raindrops. Oh, now Kuro. They've got vision on the OBS, too, so they see him with the jump down. Oh, there it is. Monkey King looking for the spring. Blood right as well, and that should be a dead Vengeful Spirit. No Boundless Strike, but the toss. See you later, Venge. Big stuff for Liquid. And there you go. That's exactly what they needed. That's what we talked about uh, them needing last time, was like actual punish when they take towers like that and then yeah. try and push right Dyer's after. Because that's something they just could not attack. do in the previous match versus Secret. Now they're actually going to find it because of the high mobility they have on the, uh, the Monkey King and the Bloodseeker. Insane, you're going to need some mobility here, though. Well, he's got some friends. Maybe it was a great bait. Trent, mind control in deep. And one place you don't want to be against the Arc Warden is alone in the jungle with nothing else around. Now, I don't know if you know this, Trent, but Flux is a really weird spell. I fear many people watching don't understand how it works. It doesn't do anything if somebody is near you. But if you're by yourself, oh, buddy, it does everything. You're slow. You're taking damage. It's pretty unfun. And, and just two of them. Uh, two Flux is fun. Oh. My goodness, because there's two Arc Wardens, perhaps? Uh-huh. That's some and wild they, stuff, they man. Stack. So you can have two Fluxes on you at once, and at level four, that's a 50% movement speed. So, uh, yeah, there's no running from the Arc Warden if you're alone like that. We got double level five supports coming through, but it's two supports that don't rely on their six for the aggression. And TP's coming out. They want to get a second kill right on the MC and kind of end his game, I think. That would be big. He is trying to rush Orchid, and this could still be punished. Now, they know the supports were smoked because he sentried their OBS, and Bloodseeker didn't have a sentry. That's why Kuro's playing so far back here. They can find the opening. Boxy's starting to move in down bottom. Does have that rupture available. Cuts through the trees. Mind control. I think he's getting out of this one. Rupture comes out, as does the side. Oh, man, this was... 
Nice. Okay. Nice toss. That'll ensure some damage as Taiga does trade his life for it. Though big reaction at Enigma. Insania falls promise. Probably not going to waste it here, and he won't. This goes the other way to ensure survival on the boxy, and they trade a one for two, but two supports for that mid profit. And a lot of TPs. Uh, I call it pretty even in the end. Uh, it looks like Fox going for a double stack here. Does the blood rate on the top camp and then pulls down on the ancients. Ooh, he's been practicing, I see, Boxy. Nice, nice. Good timing. Man. Right. I like that. They gotta have practice sessions in the uh, the game lobbies or something. The, the numbers these guys are pumping out. I think last game they had 19 stacks to Secrets 8 or something. Is, is that how Liquid warms up? They just get into the practice lobby and uh, start stacking up the jungle? So, yeah. yeah. They have little montages to it, too. <laughs> that would be pretty dank, actually. That's that's the kind of content we need in Dota. For the pubs. Yeah, instead, Team Liquid just hires Tsunami to do stuff. Like, what are they even doing? I don't understand. Uh, Quakebo looking to push out that top lane. Actually, to waiting well. to see if someone else wants to push to the top lane to be more Radiant's accurate. Bottom tower is under attack. Uh, classic stuff, though, on the Deucer. I feel like we haven't really talked about Miracle too much, but he's just going for a Manta, Dragon Lance, MKB, good mix of stats and damage, farming up a storm, outpacing the Arc Warden so far. Arc did go Midas first, but hasn't really kicked in completely yet. That level one Tempest double is still pretty good. I think we can save the defense uh, up top, though, and uh, in the plays down bottom, as we will Boxy. lose Boxy after getting his Atos. He can't really find a play, unfortunately. But uh, things looking at it good enough for Liquid that uh, the eggs is the way to go for Koikva. Didn't uh, it's not like they've lost like three tier ones by now, right? You know, you're still holding the mid tier one, obviously the most important one. So keeping it's a great item, some map control, and yeah, the eggs just does a lot in the game right now. So there you go. Dyer's Atos and Ags. Just attack. Uh, sticking with the classics here. Enigma, they're moving into enemy territory. They stack the Dire Ancients here. Or, well, like, sorry, they find the stack, I meant to say. And now, uh, thinking about killing it. Thinking about maybe Later stacking it. You might have been right, to be honest. <laughs> Almost. That was close. But uh, now Kuro lets it go. <laughs> Monkey King kind of feels like Wind Ranger these days, man. Like the, uh, the item syndrome. Like all, one more item every time. Yeah. I think that's why it just feels like no other item is good. Like, there's just specific items that work. There's some that don't, and that those are just the ones you want. Even now, I mean, what do you do next? Is it just BKB Basher, Taiga up top, get caught out? You know, like, and even this game, BKB against DP and Medusa, it feels pretty bad, but... I don't know, the hero just has amazing skills, so I, I get why he you still want to pick him. Like, he's really good laning matchups, and... He is one of the, the longest reaching initiators when it comes to, uh, like, you know, scaling cores uh, outside of the spirits. Radiant's bottom tower is under Maybe just go like a Bissell AC FDX. Weeha mid, pops the ult. Now they go in onto Boxy. Of course, there is a save maybe available. No, the swap. The Oracle was silenced, couldn't get off the false promise. So that'll be Boxy down first. But now the escape. Maybe a rehash here, or a re-goose, rather, from Nigma. They get Taiga, and the Tempest double will also get popped. So two and a half heroes dead. Uh oh, shades of previous game. Got to get those items online. Quick, was going to rush into the Agonims. I mean, again, as you're kind of saying, it's not really going to change that much instantly, but it's uh, the stepping stones towards uh, having some way to uh, contest the side of Enigma. I'm sure they know the next exorcism is going directly into the Roche pit, and that's only a minute away. This is a scary time, though. On the cusp of some big breakpoints, Mind Control now has the Orchid. That's certainly scary. Uh, Manta style on Dusa, so she's powering up. And a DP not far away from the blink. 500 gold, and she'll have a lot more catch. Also, it's actually uh, moving in down bottom with a swap play. Swapping to oh, sleep. There it is. Look at this setup. Now, can they actually follow it up? Mischief not quite there, and the stun connects to, get that off my to a kill. Chance. Beautifully done. That's a ganking Venge Medusa ET. That, that's not what you expect. 
No, but that's the thing. When Deuce is farmed like this, she can do it. Now mind control. He'll get tossed back. They've got that combo. Beautiful there. Tyga does have to pay with his life. They get a big kill on a core. Now Miracle charging in. Does have a stone gaze, but rooted up. Barely sidestep the silence. Great play. Trying to get in onto Mickey. They found the real warden, and they want to seize the moment. They're going to walk into the bubble. Does get saved by Insania. Potential. No, he's out. No interrupt. Mark Warden's gonna live, and now how far are they gonna die? Foxy, he's low, finished off by a Crypt Swarm. But Weeha stuck on the high ground. He might not have a retreat plan. Yes. Oh, Kuro! It's Kuro. He's got the first class ticket. The train going home, he'll be the sacrificial lamb that pays his life to keep his carry alive. Uh, Taga got him in the back line, though. Oh, he did. He still got the kill. Oh, no. Yeah, he fell to the other three heroes, but at least he cleaned something up. But still, I mean... You're losing a lot on the side of Liquid. Like, maybe you get the gold wins in that engagement, but you're going back to these cores all farming. I mean, it's it's something. The fact that the Arc Warden lived there is big. The OT's now up on Mickey. I think this is the moment also where Arc Warden starts to power up a bit. Right? He can really start to split push the double Kind of feels like a hero now instead of just this assistant you got on the side. Yeah, you can maybe go for a, uh, a like a smoke play or something where then the, the clone yeah. bosses in and actually does a lot of damage. Uh, the fact they also force another engagement does draw the next Roche later because they're probably going to want exorcism for it or at least they, they want to have all these options available when they go in. Right. Dyer's they don't really have anything available to, to significantly speed up Roche outside of the Venge. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess she does have the full medallion though, so... To be fair, they don't really need much more. But the Dyer are also thinking the same thing. Liquid scanning the Roche pit. They don't find anything. That's not going to force their hands into a uh, aggressive maneuver towards the Roche. Drums out on the Elder Titan. So, uh, with the medallion. What ended up happening Dyer's through all that is that they killed MC using the, the Rupture Toss combo. But then, once they saw that inside Enigma, that's why they dove in so deep with Miracle and Weeha. Because they, they're they pretty sure that Miracle only dies to that combo right now. And I think they're correct. Is now Koikfa chased down. Hasn't seen it here. He's holding it. Lucky King's in big trouble, though. They get off a good oh, silence. That profit. Still no all. Oh my gosh! Save him. Koikfa, mischief into the False Promise. It's mind control that goes down. We as well. Two dead on Enigma. Double might even survive as now they're looking to focus their efforts on Demir. I can't believe this. This Dusa doesn't have Stone Gaze. She's out of mana. It does get a big boost there, but still, can she make this stand? The Raid Boss, the Gorgon, she's actually doing it. The buybacks now for Mind Control. They're going to turn on to the Warden. Nigma, they not only survive, but they overwhelm the likes of Liquid. Yes, it costs a buyback, but one that's well worth it in the nature's profit. They couldn't touch her. She just stood there. That, <laughs> she made it look so simple. 7,000 damage. Uh, so did she get all that mana back? That, uh, that first... Was it a snake? Uh, yeah, it would have been a snake. Oh, that was a full mana bar. That completely saved me. Yeah, that was crazy. That was, like... The, the way that that whole fight started, too, with the silence on Insania, and he just barely, like, there was a mischief dodge by Koikpa on a right click that saved his life, which then gave him the time to, to get False Promise after that, which is where the ultimate came out, and they actually started, you know, and that created the chase down for Enigma, got the kills onto Weeha and MC, but in the end, Miracle was just too much there, and it only gets worse now with all that gold funnel in the Medusa and Aegis coming out for them. They're in big trouble. Step forward, two steps back. Big plays there, but now they've got to fight into Aegis. And like you said, the gap is growing between Arc Warden and Dusa. We all near up next, but I don't know if that's going to be much of a game changer. Boxy in the meantime, caught at the top tier two. Yeah, no false promise in there, 10 seconds, so he was just done for. And now they're in full split push mode. And yeah, Koifa had the uh, the Deso queued up, but now he's switching over to the uh, Diffusal, just seeing how ridiculous this Medusa is. Radiant's bottom tower is under And attack. I don't yeah, really blame after, him. After talking to Lacoste, I think it feels pretty Dyer's bad to have to buy mana burn against attack. Dusa. Generally, you just want damage to do it for you. I guess Diffusal's not too bad on the Monkey King overall. But... Well, it's really good because of the way it stacks with the clones and stuff, right? Yes. 
So everything stacks on the clones now except Echo Saber. Basher still works, right? Or no, no, no. Basher's the one that doesn't work. Is under attack. Well, Echo Saber also does. not But you get the movement speed slow from the Echo Saber still. Oh, okay. So it like half works. Yeah. Gotcha. Oh, yeah, I remember when the Basher worked. That was really busted. Monkey King would be relevant as hell if Basher worked. Well, that was why support worked, Dyer's right? Top is under yeah. attack. Um, the Echo Saber, the Echo Saber should work too. I don't see, I don't know why that wouldn't. I thought, wasn't that a patch note? Didn't they change that specifically to, to get Monkey King? Don't you remember that? Oh, the clone thing. You're right. Yeah, you're right. I do remember that. I was thinking like maybe Dyer's they had reverted it back and you just were big brained. No, no, no. I, I remember the exact one you're talking about. Yeah. I remember I was <laughs> that was the most random Dyer's change. Like Echo Saber now only works on real heroes. Or yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that was a recent patch. You're right. Yeah. So. Part Radiant's of his big time top. item. Yeah, so now the slow. But he almost looked like a real bobo there. Yeah, that's why I'm here. Yeah, so the slow doesn't work anymore. That's kind of comical. Well, speaking of bobo, Monkey King, he's down. MK does not have a buyback, and he's dead for 50. Swap from Kuro. That's going to catch Taiga. That's going to make it a twofer. Now Boxy on the run, but Lee is there. Another swap. Nowhere for this Bloodseeker to go. The race car is running out of gas. And now he's got a flat tire. That's three sideline. Things looking grim for Liquid. Again, falling apart pretty quickly here. Only 23 minutes in and a staggering lead for Nigma. Yeah, it's just a bit too similar, isn't it? Now, still two and a half minutes remaining. The Aegis still sat up here on Miracle. And there it goes, the ghosts. Go they run out and, and yeah. Strobulus, the Death Prophet. It's uh, it's rough to see someone just get kind of crushed like that two games in a row in best of ones. Yeah, I mean, but they just were not able to uh, obviously win a lot of these. Things. I mean, it's so close on that bottom one too. They were well fought, and both games had this similar storyline. Like, we'll hold this thought as maybe the final fight here. Taiga getting repelled, looking for a catch, but doesn't find it. Top lane of Barracks falling quickly. Enigma, though, they will actually respect this. They don't want to get wiped here. Miracle ruptured. Silence. Stands his ground, though. Doesn't really need to move. The Gorgon just a turret at this point as Taiga dies and buys back. Insania will follow suit. Also back in the game. Now a 7v5. Kuro, he's going to swap in and dies, but they get off a of stone gaze. Big time silence with MC throwing in right clicks in the back. There's Aegis. Medusa, another great Aegis carrier. And a buyback from Kuro. He'll try to TP in. Looks like Nigma want to end this now. Please repelled, but Miracle pressing forward, and that's the triple kill now. Boxy also low, looks like he'll live, but no Arc Warden, no Monkey King. I don't know how they can hold this. That's Taiga in the back. Guys, we're gonna get three best of ones done in the time of one uh, one game for many of our other series throughout this tournament. What is that, 23 minutes, and now we're sitting at 25 minutes as Liquid are simply herded into the well. They're getting poured in there. Yeah, what? Uh, what I was going to say is both these games have followed this kind of trajectory where the opposition against Liquid just played really good clean Dota. Dyer's just slightly tower. better movement, slightly Dyer's better stacking, very efficient gameplay, a clear strategy that was just executed a little bit better. It kind of looked like Liquid were uh, struggling to initiate a lot of fights too. They, they kind of felt like they were just like throwing rocks at cars or something. They, they just kind of like bounce <laughs> off and that's it. You know, that, that's what every fight looked like. Throwing rocks at cars. They, they needed to smash right through the window or something, you know? They needed some really precise throws here. And uh, they, they were just hitting hubcaps. A uh, really clean itemization from Nigma as well. You know, look at MC. Orchid straight into BKB. No messing around. Four staff drum on the Elder Titan. Great utility. Blink, Yules, BKB on Weeha. Wow. It's just perfect itemization, you know? Thankfully. Simple, but no mistakes. Thankfully, we can drag this game for another 25 minutes, guys. Don't let me just say it's over. Well, yeah. Because there's an Arc Warden. So. All right. So, buddy, let's estimate the win percent. Did you cheat already? No, I haven't looked. What's Dota Plus say? I'm, I'm, I'm going with like a good 98. I'm going, I was going to say 97. Okay. What do we got? Because I, I think they <laughs> like Arc Warden, but there's 99. Whoa. <laughs> oh, right, buddy. Sorry. Deuce, I tossed in, though. Yeah, can she get off this 
Stone Gage, she does. Out of mana now, four staff back. They get a bit of a reset. Weeha, low. Oh, he's ruptured now. Out of the MK ult. Can he survive? Haste rune. Yeah, that'll get countered by the rupture pretty darn quick, but Koi could destroy. Where did he go? See, BKB, Insania's down. Weeha does fall, but it takes three of them to finish him off. Bad looking fight for Liquid. No buybacks available on their dead. Did you see that? Was he waved and solar crested there? Because he just took 900 damage. That was gross. I don't know, bud. Well, bye bye, Monkey King. Uh, I mean, there was also a DD on Miracle, to be fair, so I mean, that, that's why it all happened, but okay, that's, a, that's a big part. Uh, Mick Yang swapped out, looking for the MKB, not going to save him. And I think this one's going to be GG, Trent. They're going to wrap this up like a little Christmas present. Sorry, Liquid. You're going to have to play in the play-in to decide if you're upper bracket or lower bracket. Enigma one step closer. Hey, Boxy's busy right now, all right? You let him get his kill on GH. All right, he's uh, yep, he's getting snowballed now though. Numerical, Frosty the Snowman. Now Quakefa's coming. Hey, okay. Boxy's pulling him pretty far out, but Quakefa, he gets dropped pretty much immediately, dead again. Miracle beyond godlike, I believe. Uh, just one death here, not quite deathless. But Weeha gets some vengeance as Liquid desperately makes the final hold. They're resilient, these Liquid boys. They're going to hang in as long as they can. But now, I think, Trent, they're going to wrap this up like a nice little Christian. <laughs> I think Liquid are just trying to bait them into buying the, the rake here, right? They're just trying to irritate them enough that they go for it. Zone gaze, boxy dead, and smack the throne, we will. Nick A doing the Ah, uh, yes, yes, good, good. How do you like it, Nigma? Oh, they know this well. MKB does not work on buildings. Why? Why? Well, it doesn't matter because there's not 100% upside. So, oh, wait, oh, we get another round. Trent, one to the, to the well. No boxy, it's a 5v4, the final fight indeed. We've teased it. They're like a band that's done their farewell tour multiple times, but now the throne, it will fall. It's too much. Liquid are overwhelmed. Enigma, take this series. Well, this game. It, well, it was a series, technically. It's okay. Don't worry. This one game series. Yes.